Good evening, friends. This is Pastor Angela Valley of Christ Reformed Church here in Alexandria, PA, and it's my joy this evening to spend just a few moments with you considering our Belgic Confession of Faith. Again, the Belgic Confession, written 1561, has been the Confession of Faith for the Reformed Church, and it is a great tool that covers so many wonderful topics that if you're looking to grow in the Christian faith and understand what the Bible is all about, I can't commend this resource enough to you. And tonight I'll be using it for this uh, Trinity Psalter hymnal and, and taking some time to look at just a part of the Belgian Confession, Article 9. Now, why am I only doing a part? It's actually rather large, and it's dealing with one of the greatest mysteries uh, in the universe, which is the Holy Trinity. And so tonight we're just going to spend just a few moments considering together what it has to say, make some comments, and see where we go from there. Well, let's take a moment to read part of the Belgian Confession, Article 9 says, the scriptural witness on the Trinity. All these things we know from the testimonies of Holy Scripture, as well as from the effects of the persons, especially from those we feel within ourselves. The testimonies of the Holy Scriptures, which teach us to believe in this Holy Trinity, are written in many places of the Old Testament, which need not be enumerated, but only chosen with discretion. In the book of Genesis, God says, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. So God created man in his own image. Indeed, male and female, he created them. Behold, male and female, oh, sorry. Behold, man has become like one of us. It appears from this that there is a plurality of persons within the deity. When he says, Let us make man in our image. And afterwards, he indicates the unity when he says, God created. It is true that he does not say here how many persons there are, but what is somewhat obscure to us in the Old Testament is very clear in the New. Now, one of the things that we have to recognize when we're reading our Bible is that it is a single book. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. It is a, a false understanding to pit the Old Testament against the New Testament. As Christians, we need both. And so what we're going to find as we learn more about who God is from the New Testament and the fulfilling of all the Old Testament promises and the greater revelation we have through the New Testament, through Christ and his prophets and apostles, it leads us to look again and see in the Old Testament what was there in shadows or types or even hinted at. And so what this confession reminds us about the Trinity, first and foremost, is that the Old Testament gives us clear hints about the reality of the Holy Trinity. Again, contrary to many cults today that would deny the Holy Trinity, the Holy Trinity is a sacred, vest, uh, a sacred mystery, uh, a sacred gem of the Christian church. You know, when we're beginning to consider this thing, we're, we're looking and peering into the heart of God, and we, we have, can only go as far as he's revealed to us in his word. And so it says in the book of Genesis, it says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. The idea there of the Imago Dei is central. It's the uniqueness of the human creature that sets them apart from all other creatures. So the Lord in that instance in Genesis 1 cannot be talking about him and angels or him and other things. This is him alone. He says, let us make man in our image. And then it goes on to say, so God created man in his own image. So pairing those two together, God created man in his own image, but he's using this our. What's going on there? Again, what the confession is getting at there is, is the clear hint that God is a plurality of persons. But again, they didn't know how many persons yet. It's not until we come into the New Testament that what is hidden or partially revealed in the Old is made more manifest or more clear. For example, we can think about Jesus' baptism, right? We think about Matthew 3. The Father is there, the Son is there, the Spirit is there, and the Spirit in this avian imagery as a dove echoes what the Spirit does in Genesis 1. The Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. Again, we might think of the baptismal formula, Matthew chapter 28, 19, where it talks about we've been baptized in the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We might think about the apostolic benediction of 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Again, all these things make explicit what is in hinted or embryonic form in the Old Testament. The unveiling of God's uh, revelation. And so the confession makes that clear. It says, it appears from this, there is a plurality of persons within the deity. Now it's true 
it'll go on to make clear uh, how many persons there are. I've already attested to it this time. But, but I just wanted to give you a window into this world. We are called in, in Christianity to read our Old Testament with New Testament lenses. Not to pump in there things that aren't there, but to see what God has already shown to us. Again, there's an example from Warfield. B.B. Uh, Warfield, uh, the great Princeton theologian, old Princeton seminary in the 1800s. This idea that, think of a room that's dimly lit. That's the Old Testament. And then when the New Testament comes, it's as if they finally turn the lights on and you can see clearly everything that was already there. It's not that new things are being snuck in, but rather we're finally able to see clearly or sufficiently what was there all along. And so that's how come as uh, New Testament uh, believers, as Christians, when we read the Old Testament, we always want to read it in such a way that we get thrown out of a synagogue, as one professor often put it. We want to see it in its pointing forward to Christ, because that's what Jesus teaches us in Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 46. Well, I'm out of time today. I appreciate you spending a few moments as we could just consider part of the confession together. I pray that you are encouraged, uh, that you are perhaps drawn to read this confession yourself, reread Genesis, reread the Old Testament with this lens in view. But at the very least, if this is something that's been encouraged with you, uh, we pray that you would like this page, that you would share it, comment on it, tag a friend on it. Or even check us out on our website at www.crcalexandria.org where we have more lectures and sermons and other teaching uh, tools available for your benefit and edification. Again, I'm Pastor Angela Valley. I look forward to talking with you next week and maybe even having you join us here in Christ Reformed Church in Alexandria, PA for worship. God bless you and have a good night, friends. Bye-bye.